sight is perhaps our most treasured sense, and the more we find out about how the eye works, the more amazing it seems. The eye can be thought of as being composed of three continuous layers. The outer layer, the sclera, and cornea, encloses and protects the internal structures of the eye in a tough, fibrous coat. Inside this lies the uvea, comprising the choroid, ciliary body and iris. The innermost layer, the vital one which translates light into nerve impulses for the brain, is the retina. Light enters the eye through the cornea. The iris controls the size of the pupil, the hole in its centre, and thereby the amount of light entering the eye. In low light, the pupil dilates to enhance vision, and in bright light, it contracts to protect the retina. As light passes through the transparent structures of the eye, it is refracted. The main contributor to refraction is the cornea. In perfect vision, the parallel rays of light from a distant point come into focus at the fovea on the retina. Light from a near point needs to be bent more so the lens changes shape to focus near and distant objects on the retina according to the closeness of the object. This function is called accommodation. When light strikes the photoreceptor cells in the retina, they transmit nerve impulses via the optic nerve to specialised areas of the brain, where they are decoded as visual images. Let's now take a closer look. The cornea forms a continuous structure with the sclera. The anterior sclera is visible as the white of the eye. The inside of the eyelids and the anterior sclera are covered by a mucous membrane called the conjunctiva. Mucus secreted by glands in the conjunctiva protects and lubricates the anterior sclera. Tiny blood vessels seen in the white of the eye are in the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva does not extend over the cornea, which is covered only by a thin tear film. Behind the cornea, the iris forms a circular rim in front of the lens. It has muscles which control the size of the pupil, the hole in its centre, and thereby the amount of light entering the eye. The lens is a transparent elastic capsule. Radial fibres, called zonules, connect it to the ring-shaped ciliary muscle within the ciliary body. Contraction of ciliary muscle causes the lens to become more spherical, bringing near objects into focus on the retina. Like most other parts of the body, the cornea and the lens are comprised of living cells, which have to take in oxygen and other nutrients and excrete waste products. Most tissues do this via the circulatory system, but in some parts of the eye, different mechanisms are used in order not to impede the passage of light. The space between the lens and cornea is filled with a circulating fluid, the aqueous humour, which nourishes the back of the cornea and the lens. It is a filtrate of plasma secreted from capillaries in the ciliary body and iris. The front of the cornea is nourished by tear film and by taking in oxygen directly from the air. The space behind the lens is filled with a thin transparent gel, mostly water, called the vitreous body, or sometimes the vitreous humour. It helps transport metabolites to the lens and inner retina. If the eye is a camera, the retina is the film. It converts light waves into nerve impulses that can be decoded by the brain. This is done by a layer of photoreceptors, specialised neurons which are capable of phototransduction a process where the energy of photons polarises the cell, causing connecting neurons to fire. There are two different types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. The rods are sensitive to low levels of light, so are needed for night vision. They're also sensitive to movement. The cones need higher levels of light, 
but can distinguish fine detail and colour. Different cones are sensitive to different wavelengths of light. Behind the photoreceptors is a layer of epithelial cells, the retinal pigment epithelium, or RPE. These cells are rich in pigments that absorb light so that it does not scatter within the eye. The RPE nourishes the photoreceptors and processes waste products from them, transporting these across Bruch's membrane to the choroid. The choroid is a highly vascular tissue which supplies the sclera and the outer part of the retina with oxygen and nutrients. It is also rich in pigments that absorb light so that it doesn't scatter within the eye. Blood flow through the choroid is the highest of any tissue in the body. The red eye effect in photographs is a reflection from the highly vascular choroid. In front of the layer of photoreceptors lies a complex network of neurons which processes and transmits impulses to the brain. A layer of bipolar cells carries information from the rods and cones to ganglion cells. Amacrine cells interact in further networks to influence and integrate the ganglion cell signals. The axons of the ganglion cells form a nerve fibre layer as they run across the inner retina and gather to form the optic nerve. While the photoreceptors receive oxygen and nutrients from the choroid, the inner retinal layers are nourished by a capillary network lying within the layers of neurons. These vessels receive blood via the retinal artery, which enters the eye at the optic nerve head. It's important to realise that, in most of the retina, light has to pass through this thin layer of neurons and blood vessels to reach the photoreceptors. Overall, there are more rods than cones. In the periphery of the eye, there are many rods and few cones. But in the area responsible for central vision, cones are more numerous than elsewhere. This central area is called the macula, or sometimes the macula lutea, or yellow spot. It appears yellow due to high concentrations of the pigments lutein and zeaxanthin in the axons of rods and cones. These are thought to help filter out short wavelength, blue and ultraviolet, light, protecting the photoreceptors rather like sunglasses. At the centre of the macula lies the fovea. The word fovea comes from the Latin for a pit. Here there are no rods, only tightly packed cones and their associated neurons, to maximise visual acuity at the point where incoming light is focused. The fovea takes the form of a depression because the connecting neurons are moved away radially from the centre. The ganglion cells are piled up around the depression, up to six layers thick, forming the foveal rim, the thickest part of the retina. At the centre of the fovea is the foveal avascular zone, FAZ where there is literally a hole in the network of capillaries that supply the rest of the inner retina, allowing more light to reach the photoreceptors. The foveola, the central floor of the fovea, is about 0.35 mm across and consists only of cone photoreceptors. The back of the eye is called the fundus. Looking at the fundus shows how some of the structures we've mentioned relate to each other. The optic disc, or optic nerve head, is where the optic nerve penetrates the sclera, choroid and retina. Here there are no photoreceptors, creating a natural blind spot. Retinal arteries enter and retinal veins leave through the same opening as the optic nerve. These blood vessels supply the inner surface of the retina. The macula, the specialised area in the centre of the retina, appears yellow because of the protective yellow pigments zeaxanthin and lutein. The fovea is the super-specialised centre of the macula which is responsible for our sharpest visual acuity and which you're using to see this animation. <laughs>